Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, what I'm gonna do is teach you a few things. I've been in this game for a while. I've lost a lot of weight. I've gotten pretty lean, gotten pretty ripped, but I've also stumbled quite a few times on the path to get there and actually be consistent. I'm gonna share with you guys all the things I wish I knew, the misconceptions, the bullshit, the marketing that I fell for early on that if I could go back in time and change some things, these are the things I would change. I'm gonna give you my top five by the end of this video. If you're trying to lose weight, be lean and live your best life, you're gonna be glad you had this knowledge. Let's go. Now the first thing I really wish I knew was that fad diets are essentially just marketing bullshit. Seriously, I know there's some people watching this. You might be on keto, you might be on carnivore, you might be on Adkins. Something out there, right? Big flashy name, lots of success stories in a very specific way you need to eat. And it's easy to get wrapped up in that because people do find success, right? But you know why they find success at these things? It's typically because what they were doing before was the standard American diet. You're driving through places, you're basically living a life of gluttony. You're eating, you're drinking everything, you don't even know what a calorie is, you don't know what a nutrition label is. And as soon as you have even the tiniest bit of structure in your life, boom, you see results. That is 99.9% of why a fad diet works and people see these results in the first place. But how often do you see someone follow one of these fad diets? And after the initial excitement and weight loss happens, they end up uh, not following it and getting the weight back. How often is it actually consistent? I mean, seriously, name one person that did keto that is still on keto and living their best life. You probably can't. And if you do, they're probably a weirdo. I'm kidding. I wish everybody had success. But what I'm trying to say here is that like anytime a new diet like this comes out, right? Anytime something like this is packaged up and presented to you, as the next big thing. And then there's certain supplements you gotta take with it. There's certain people that build their identity around it, trying to sell you on it. There's typically something going on behind the scenes. I want you guys to understand this. Nothing more is required to lose weight than to simply eat in a calorie deficit. That's it. However you achieve that, whether it is following a fat diet or still driving through Wendy's and McDonald's, all you gotta do is eat less calories than your body needs in a day. It really is that simple. And if you wanna make sure that you're losing optimal weight, you're targeting body fat, you need to be eating a high protein diet. But other than those two things, that is all you need to do. So if you're following a fad diet now, or you see someone following a fad diet, or you see a commercial for one, just understand that while it might be a helpful tool eating just meat for the rest of your life, dear God, might help you eliminate some foods you have cravings for, at the end of the day, it's not magic. And if you truly want to lose weight, all you got to do is eat less than your body needs in a day. I wish I would have known this, because Lord knows I've been on a million of these fad diets. I've done keto, I've done carnivore, all for extended periods of time, all because I thought they were miracles. When in reality, all I had to do was eat less than my body needed. And that takes us straight into it. The second thing I wish I knew was that uh, clean foods aren't real. They're a myth. I know a lot of people get hung up on what clean food means. To me, clean food means like chicken, rice, and broccoli, right? I guess there's different terms for it, but the way that I came up was that if you eat chicken, rice, and broccoli and nothing else, there's something magical about that. There's just something that'll happen to your body and you'll get way different results. You'll start to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger himself if you eat this. And that was something that I held on to for the longest time. And I could do it. I could go for 12 weeks, chicken, rice, and broccoli, broccoli, eggs in the morning, little bit of peanut butter in my oats, following a clean diet, and I would get lean. I would get shredded. I would look great. But at the end of that 12 weeks, I would be so hungry and so full of cravings that inevitably, as soon as I tried to like get off the diet or transition back, I would gain almost all the weight back immediately. And I'm not even kidding. I have stories about it. I'm not going to go deep, but a week after doing a photo shoot, you look in the mirror as you're drinking a beer and you just left Roosters and your abs are gone. That's a, that's a low point. That's a low point. And we can get into the whole, yeah, clean foods have more vibe vitamins, minerals. I mean, we can get into like, you can frame up clean foods however you want. But essentially the idea is you're not going to get any different results. If you eat chicken, rice, and broccoli at 2000 calories a day, and that creates a calorie deficit for you, and you're getting 200 grams of protein, then you will. If you eat pizza, ice cream, and donuts, and still get 200 grams of protein and eat 200 calories, you might be a little more inflamed, have a little more water weight on you. But in the grand scheme of things, the results aren't going to be any different. It's not that a food inherently has to be something you completely avoid or it's evil. Or if you don't eat chicken, rice, and broccoli, you're not going to be able to lose the weight and as you're sitting at Denny's, Denny's is terrible, Applebee's, and everybody else is eating good and you had to get a chicken breast and some florezza broccoli and you're crying into your bowl of water because you can't even eat soup. It's water, you're crying into it as you're doing that and you're just hating everything about what you're doing. It doesn't have to be like that. Clean foods aren't magical. Yes, there might be some health benefits to not having dairy, but at the end of the day, if you're trying to lose weight, trying to build a little muscle, it doesn't matter where these macros come from. At the end of the day, it all breaks down to calories, which are gonna be calculated from how many grams of fat you had, how many grams of protein you had, and how many grams of carbs you had. Your body doesn't distinguish or care where that comes from. Energy is energy. Calories in, calories out. Law of thermodynamics will never lie. So if you want that tub of ice cream before bed, go right ahead. It's not gonna negatively affect you unless you're eating more calories than your body needs in a day. And that also conveniently slides us into myth number three. I touched on it a little bit, but essentially no food 
food is a bad food. You don't eat ice cream and boom, your entire diet's screwed. You don't eat pizza and boom, your entire diet's over. That's not the way it works. I always say this, no such thing as bad foods, only bad ingredients. And even then, bad ingredients is a stretch because if you do eat the full fat everything pizza, if you follow the two rules, you get your protein goal and calorie goal every single day, you're still gonna be fine. And I really wish I knew this because it took me far too long to realize it. I had just moved to Texas, was in the middle of a cut, literally starved myself, killed myself, was having crazy cheat meals on the weekends, developed an eating disorder because I missed regular food so much. And as soon as I switched over, that mindset, right? I started incorporating the pizzas, the chocolate chip waffles, the fun foods into my life, making ice cream. Now we got the Ninja Creamy, it's even better. Once I started having those foods, I realized how much of this was just a mind game. And I really think that was the secret for me. I told myself I couldn't have certain foods. All week I'd obsess about when I could have them. I would develop these terrible, unhealthy relationships with food. But once I was able to incorporate like a pizza every night into my diet, triple cheeseburger, I got my ice cream. Once I had that in my regular diet, it was almost like this is less of even a diet and more of just what I do. And I always say this, right? I think it's kind of funny. When I was a kid, my diet consisted of pizza, Mountain Dew, ice cream, right? I was fat, I was out of shape. I locked myself aside and played video games. But now as an adult, my diet consists of Mountain Dew, zero sugar, pizza, and ice cream, and now I'm in phenomenal shape. Let's be honest, I'm in great shape. But all I'm doing is changing the way I make these things, right? They taste amazing to me. I love them. I can't even drink a regular soda anymore because I can just taste awful. And while I can still eat regular ice cream and pizza, how it makes me feel is gross. I like eating a pint of ice cream, and afterwards you feel like you can still go run a marathon, and you loved it. That, for me, has been the secret. And for the love of God, I wish I knew about this, not only earlier, because it would have saved me a lot of pain and anguish, but two, do you know how rich I'd be if I'd have invented this all that time ago? It'd be insane. I'd be like the Jeff Bezos of protein recipes. For me, I think that's quite literally the biggest thing. And I always say this, guys, I have tons of recipes on my channel, right? You can have whatever you want and see results. All you gotta do is understand the two most fundamental rules. You're gonna have a calorie goal for whatever your goal is. You need to hit that every day. And you're gonna have a minimum protein goal. That's all you gotta worry about. And if you're eating out of my cookbook or any of these recipes, you're gonna hit that protein goal no matter what. And all you gotta do is keep track of the calories you eat, which is easy. We're on our phones all day. There's tons of apps. You can do that. If you're serious about it, you can do it. And if you wanna take it a step further, I do have a cookbook with all my recipes in it, over 350 pages every time I drop a new video, like the cookie dough cheesecake I just dropped, which is banging by the way. They get added to the book for free, so you get it one time, it's going to grow for the life that you have it. There's enough food in here where you could have variety for the rest of your life, and I know if you follow us in here, you'll see results no matter what, you just got to do it. If you think you can manage that, hit the link down below. I know if you do, you won't regret it. Now the fourth thing that I wish I knew when I was starting out was that bulking it's kind of a lie. I mean, it is a lie. At least the way that we frame it up is a lie. So in order to build muscle, a lot of people are gonna tell you, you need a calorie surplus. You need to go extreme, eat as much food as possible. I remember back then, we'd make protein shakes. You'd crack two raw eggs, cup of oats, dollops of peanut butter, whole milk, whole milk, blend that sucker up and just drink it. It was thick, boy. The North remembers. And that was all in the name of getting as many calories as possible so we could build as much muscle as possible. When in reality, that's not how you need to do it. Your body doesn't need that much to grow. It just needs a little bit of extra calories. That can be 100, 200, 300 extra calories. When you have that surplus, it gives you the extra materials you need to build an addition onto your body. Think about it this way, right? If you're trying to build a deck on your house, House. You can have the hammers, the nails, you can have all that stuff, and you can bang away as much as you want, but if you don't got the wood, you can't really do shit, right? So it's the opposite of creating the calorie deficit. We're creating a little calorie surplus. Give yourself a little bit of wood to work with, but you don't want too much wood, because next thing you know, the deck's finished, but there's wood everywhere, bud. You don't even got a yard no more. It's wood. It's infested with termites. The old lady's leaving you for the wood guy, because he's rich now. So I'm going off on a tangent. But essentially, you don't need to go crazy, right? There's no reason, once you get to this point, that you should let yourself get fat. I've done it plenty of times. We were touching on it earlier. I've gotten lean, I've gotten mean, I've gotten ripped. I mean, I'm pretty mean and lean and ripped right now, but I'm saying in the past, we all know I'm in phenomenal shape. But I would take that, and then I would start eating back, and then I would start the winter bulk. It was winter, I said, we gotta bulk, we gotta bulk. Damn it, we're bulking! Well then, boom. Once the smoke cleared and the dust settled, we'd committed a seven deadly sin. Sloth, gluttony, we were huge. And we hated ourselves, wasn't fun. Now, I really only fluctuate little bits of weight here and there, I never let things get too out of hand. I mean, it's winter right now and your butt's still pretty tight. Let's not lie, I'm in phenomenal shape. <laughs>
But all jokes aside, guys, a lot of it for me was uh, really just lying to myself. I wanted to eat bad. I wanted to be a glutton. And it's funny because uh, once I changed that, life is so much better. I'm telling you, to build a little muscle, don't need to overeat, do anything too crazy. You don't got to push 10 plates at the Golden Corral. All you got to do is eat a little more than you would. Maybe that's one extra pizza, one extra Anna bar, the world's best tasting protein bar. And boom, you're doing all you got to do. And lift a little weights, of course. And the last thing that I wish I knew to wrap it all up, to bring it home, is that it truly is. It truly is fundamentally down to its core, to its root, calories in versus calories out. I know we touched on this a little bit, but I want to extrapolate a little further. Breadth it, width it. And there's no better way than to break it down like this. Let's say you are going on a vacation on the weekend, right? You know, you're going to be gone for two days. You're not going to be on your diet. You want to live a little, have a little fun. And you've been eating 2,000 calories a day. That's a 500 calorie deficit. 2,500 is what would keep you the same weight. But you wanted to put some extra gas in the tank. You could go walk on a treadmill, set it in an incline, maybe go three miles per hour, nice little brisk walk uphill, get what I'm saying? And let's say you did four of those sessions and let's say each session burned 500 calories. That would give you 2,000 extra calories in the bank that you could eat back without any fear of actually gaining any weight. And it works like that. It works a lot like a bank, really. The more you move, whether that's a walk, whether you're on the phone, you're walking laps in your house. I do that all the time. Whether you're chasing your dog around the house to give him a whooping. Logan's not a good dog, don't let him fool you. I've been fooled before by a cute face. But essentially, the more you move, no matter what that movement is, you are going to be burning calories. Getting those steps in is important. Park a little further out at the grocery store. Walk your happy ass in there. You can do it. I famously have a little mini stepper. If I need to do cardio, I put it behind my couch and I'll watch one TV show and just do my little mini stepper hanging on the back of the couch. There's ways to do movement. You can save up calories that way. The same way you could eat a thousand less calories, create a thousand calorie deficit instead of the 500 and bank those calories up for the weekend, right? We can look at it more in terms of how many calories did you eat over the course of a week than we really can a day. Anything you under eat on one day can be saved up and used on the next day. Vice versa, it's all interchangeable. At the end of the day, that's one big math problem. Calories in, calories out. The law of thermodynamics will never lie to you. It's honest, much unlike all these politicians. And I really wish I knew this back in the beginning because I didn't understand it. I thought that uh, if you weren't doing 40 minutes of hard sprinting, it wasn't cardio. I thought that I needed cardio and I didn't even count those into my calories so I was starving myself and making myself miserable. Lots of things like that. But realistically, at the end of the day, all movement counts, all movement is cardio. Get yourself about 10,000 steps in. If you got a trip coming up, eat a little less, move a little more. At the end of the day, like I said, calories in, calories out. Hit that protein goal, eat out of the cookbook, you'll be fine. Boom. Hopefully you guys learned something from that. Like I said, man, I uh, sometimes think about why I was put on this earth. And I think it's to go through all this bullshit so I can tell people about it so they can avoid the bullshit. If I can make anybody's life easier, hey, it's good karma. I like good karma. You guys rock. Thank you so much for the support. Hopefully everybody's crushing it, losing weight, all that good stuff. By the way, if you think protein bars traditionally suck and you want the world's best tasting protein bar, and I'm not lying, I'm honest. In the world, you got to try the new triple chocolate wasted flavor. You can grab it on deannabar.com. My code RJF10 will save you money. We are now in Vitamin Shop, baby. Vitamin Shops are dope, by the way. Tons of good protein snacks and drinks to help you get through your diet, chips, things like that. So check out Vitamin Shop regardless. I love those guys. They've been a pleasure to work with. But seriously, if you're in there, pick up an Anna Bar. I know you'll love it. You can't even taste the protein. Literally tastes like a candy bar with a ton of other retailers. GNC, HCB, 24-7 Fitness. We're in a lot of places. Throw a locator on the site. Appreciate you guys, as always, for all the support on this. I know you'll love it. If you ever like the clothes I'm wearing, shout out to Young LA. I mean, come on, baby. Come on, man. This, this is a goaded fit right here. And what I love is it's right, nice and tight right here, right? You see that? Boom, right? Ladies love that shit. Ladies love a tight sleeve. Ladies love a tight sleeve. Damn it. But nice and loose right here, right? So it gives you the illusion. It hangs off the chest shelf, creates this. I'm not this wide, guys. It's the fucking shirt. And the joggers are dope. Same thing, right? Big bulge in the crotch, but tight where it needs to be. Love Young LA. <laughs> YoungLA.com. Code RJ will save you money. Got stuff for men and women. Seriously, it's all I wear. I vouch for them 100%. Is the only other company I work with. And that means something, baby. Pick up my cookbook. And if you want to work with me one on one, meal plans and online coaching available at RamiseJaysFitness.com. And I'll be the motherfucker emailing you. No one else. It'll be me because I handle my shit. I don't pay people to do it. So appreciate you guys. I'm out of here. I'm sorry we didn't do an Anabar giveaway in this video. Had a lot going on, guys. But in the next one, I'll do two. So leave your comments and all that shit. Appreciate you guys as always. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see one of you at the next video. See you guys. Boom. Boom, 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 baby. Bop, 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 bop. We gone. Ha!